What's up? So your boy secured one of these. Now these are almost sold out everywhere, but they best deal, best deal out there. So you may be wondering, what is this? Well, this is the Google Chromecast with Google TV. Now what Google TV is, is that it's like an add-on to Android TV. We'll do a little unboxing, even though I've opened this before, but you guys might want to see a little unboxing. So, you guys are probably pretty impressed. Look, I got double angles going on here. Here's the box right here, and we do a little open right here, and here we go. So we got, it's kind of fancy. Like, this is actually pretty fancy right here. So we open it up, and as you can see, I've opened this before. But this is the actual Chromecast device, and here is the remote for it. Now, this thing's been pretty popular recently. People have been talking about it a lot. And here is a little pancake device. It's actually, uh, it's probably the size of my phone. My audio quality probably just got better. It's about the size of my phone, which is an iPhone 10 right here. Um, if it'll focus, bro. It is a bit bigger than the old Chromecast. It's smaller, though, than the Chromecast 4K Ultra. So this is the main device right here. And normally it comes with a plug, but obviously since I've used this before, I, I moved the plug already. So here's our main device right here. Now here's the remote. I love the remote actually. So let's open it up and here is our remote. So that's a good thumbnail guys. That's a good thumbnail. So here's the remote and the Chromecast. The remote actually has, oops, pretend like I didn't do that. The remote is about the size of my hand. Probably a good comparison for this is the size of two Chromecasts, if you have an old Chromecast. And so this is the main button. You can, it feels very nice. It's like uh, just a nice plastic here. Also, a little bit of an add-on here. Look how sick their batteries are. I mean, these are pretty, look, they have no logos on them. They look like they're from Ikea, actually. So we also have a Google Assistant button. I'll go through these buttons later and what they look like on the TV, or just skip to this time code if you wanna know what that's like. And we have the home button, mute button, YouTube, Netflix, off, on button and the input button so you may be wondering there's not several inputs on the actual device itself no there is not so this remote is a universal remote it'll connect to your tv that's really what this power button does and what the input button does so let's get into the setup and how it all starts so that's pretty much it for the box and the opening the devices are actually pretty nice themselves they're very minimal i do like the design as far as the setups involved I personally do not have footage of my own setup because, hey, I, I was pretty excited that I got it. So I sort of went ahead and set it up without recording, which I kind of regret now. But here's some footage of the setup. It's not anything too complicated. You kind of just scan, you download the Google app, you scan it. If you've owned a Google device before, this stuff will probably be pretty familiar to you because it's the same process with all the Google stuff. So let's get into what the TV looks like and feels like. Okay, so let's make a little bit of a list here. So first of all, this Google Chromecast is $50. That's a pretty good price considering it shoots 4K, or it doesn't shoot, it it plays video in 4K at 60 frames per second. And Google's own Chromecast Ultra, which is the only purpose of it, is that it plays in 4K Ultra HD. This device does it for 10 bucks less and has way more features. Now that's probably the good general overview, but let's get into what the interface is like. As soon as you get in the interface, Google knows us and and know what we like, whether we like it or not. So it'll show us all the content that it thinks we'll like to watch, especially if you have YouTube TV, which it'll show you some live TV features and it'll show you like stuff you continue to watching and stuff you need to watch later. So it's pretty great. Uh, on top of that, you can play video games and connect an Xbox remote to this. Now, I'm not sure how well all video games run. Asphalt 8 was, I got running and obviously you're not gonna be playing any like super big video games, but it does work with some of the main streaming services. Kind of ironic though, it doesn't work with Stadia, which is Google's own game streaming service. So you can't use Stadia. You can, however, use PlayStation Link, Steam streaming, and one other, but I'm forgetting it. I'll probably just put it somewhere on the screen. Now, for some of these, personally, I haven't used them, but I'll link to this guy's video who actually used them himself and figured out what services, and I'm kind of going based off of his video. That was a great video, by the way, thank you. And on top of this, there is a Google Assistant button, which is great. I mean, it's, it's so great. You don't even need the Google Assistant anymore unless you use the Google Assistant for alarms or timers, but I really just use my phone for things like that. So the Google Assistant is fully featured on this TV. You can do anything, you can play games, talking games that you can play with the normal Google Assistant. You can tell it to turn off and on the lights. It does a lot of things 
and you can turn on the off and on the thermostat. If you have a smart house, this is probably a great decision. The only thing is it doesn't work with the OK Google thing. Sorry, I had to say that slow because I didn't want mine to go off. It doesn't work with that. How it works is you push down the button, the TV will show up with whatever content you want, and it kind of acts as the display sometimes depending on what you ask. So if you ask the weather, it'll show you, hey, this is what the weather's like. Now, another thing is this runs Android, just Android. It's basically a, a cell phone with a TV built on top of it, I guess we could say. Now, the thing about this is there's no security built in here. So by security, I mean like any walls that don't allow you to run Android apps on this TV. You're even able to root the TV in order to install apps that they technically don't let you put on there, but there's ways to get around it. And there's not very many apps that you won't be able to get on there. I mean, it's pretty much the entire Google Play Store you can install on your TV. Now, do keep in mind, obviously, it's not touching. You can't touch anything. So the touch-based things probably won't work unless they offer remote support. So a lot of games do offer remote support, but some don't, and some apps won't offer remote support. So it is gonna kind of suck. But there's definitely workarounds. If you root it, you can connect different stuff. I actually connected up my AirPods to the TV and listened via my AirPods. So there's a lot you can do with it. There's no camera if you want things with cameras. There's nowhere to install a camera. It's kind of just this pancake thing you get. So kind of sucks there. Now, the other thing I noticed is I believe this has two gigabytes of RAM, which is enough to run like PUBG, which is pretty crazy. So it is really fast. Like it feels super fast. There's only a few times where it gets sluggish, but if you're opening and closing apps and going through a bunch of apps, then yeah, obviously it's going to be a little sluggish, but the overall OS of it is really cool as it just sorts Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube TV and all your services into one kind of section and it'll sort them, give you reviews for all of them. It's really like an add on to Netflix or Hulu and it's it's pretty great. I like I like it, I like it. It's definitely better than some of the other options out there, especially coming in at way higher price points like the Apple TV 4K, 50 bucks, I it's a steal. If you wanna order this, by the way, do check the link below because right now I'm not sponsored or anything, but do check the link below. They are sold out until December, so yeah, you're gonna wanna order them pretty quick. Lastly, let me get to some of the surprising things about the remote itself. So the remote connects straight to the TV. You put in what TV model you have, and you can control the TV volume instead of the Chromecast volume into the TV. So this has the mute buttons work, the on off buttons work, and the volume buttons work. Now I do wish it did have a audio jack, but again, I said I connected my AirPods up to it and it worked fine, so that was great. The input source button doesn't work for me, but I believe on some TVs it will work. So that's pretty much it for my Google Chromecast review. Now I know this video is a little bit different than some of my other videos. If you want more videos that are in this like review type style, I'll definitely start doing these. I could probably do two videos a week and one being tech, one being some review videos. Other than that, I'll see you.